Welcome back to the Fifth Quarter Sportscast. I'm your Judy, and I'm here again with Todd Corley. How are we doing this fine morning? Good morning, sailor. <laughs> I am pulling into port now. I will let you know as soon as I get it wet. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Oh, that's going to be one of those episodes. <laughs> Got the trash can ready. Sorry, kids. Dad's drinking tonight. <laughs> With that being said, we uh, we just finished up week 13 here uh, after a back and forth uh, shootout, more or less, uh, Monday night football game between the Jags and the Bengals. Uh, so we'll take a look at the poll here of the week. Start out uh, with the week 13, just finishing up back and forth Monday night football game. There's still some questions for a few teams with playoff aspirations. Uh, learning going forward here. We got in the game, and we'll get into this here once we break down some of the games. Uh, Trevor Lawrence did go down, uh, came out. I believe with a high ankle sprain. So, I mean, he did avoid some major issues, but he'll still be out for a couple of weeks. But uh, Trevor Lawrence going down, inconsistent up and down play from Kansas City, Kenny Pickett going down, and Kirk Cousins tearing his Achilles done for the year. So, with that being said, all four of these teams, a division, you know, leading spot or potentially wild card in the hunt. Um, right now, Trevor Lawrence going down has the highest uh, and the only votes at 100%. I didn't really want to put the Vikings in just because they were on a bye, so they really didn't have any say one way or the other. But Plus, Kirk Cousins got hurt like six weeks ago. So yeah. I, yeah, I, I get that. But I was kind of looking at some of I didn't really – I mean, my other I option, I was – Kirk Cousins got injured when Golden Girls was still in the air. Impossible. <laughs> fuck is this poll i mean i was looking at the other option of putting buffalo but they were you know again they were on a buy too so i was kind of struggling to put some other teams in there that you know have the playoff hopes but had some major injuries as a setback um but regardless trevor lawrence wins that i would have went with trevor lawrence tell him as what well. he's won jared <laughs> a golf cart trip to the ed <laughs> Did you? We'll, we'll we'll get into that when we uh, break down the game. But did you see how? That's got to be the first I've seen them make him walk off the field, walk through the tunnel, walk to the locker room on a guy with a bad ankle. Like, did they? Could they not afford the cart? Did, did the guy with the cart? Is he? Was he sleeping? Was he? Was it his day off? Like, I, sure, uh, I saw a video of. Yeah, I, I saw a video of a dude in a golf cart in a tunnel. Was he get, was he was he following yeah. behind Lawrence? <laughs> was he escorting him? He couldn't get he couldn't get the B. That was a problem. Yeah, I saw that and I was like, why is he walking with the guy in the cart? Not <laughs> all right, whatever. But with that being said, uh, yeah, Trevor Lawrence wins that poll of the week. So we'll uh, start off with some of the games here. Uh, looking back, we had. Dallas and uh, Seattle on the Thursday night game. And that was one of the few games where your typical uh, advice of taking the under did not pan out. That was a back and forth shootout. Uh, I definitely did not expect Seattle to put up that much of a fight, but it was, uh, it was a pretty interesting game. I actually didn't hate watching it. Dallas does get the win 40, 41, 35. Um, I, Looking at some of the stats, I will say it, it is kind of deceiving because it does look like Geno Smith had a heck of a game compared to Dak Prescott. Uh, Geno, 23 of 41, 334, three touchdowns, one interception. Uh, Dak, 29 of 41, 299, three interceptions, or three touchdowns, no interceptions. However, he was sacked four times. It was definitely a back-and-forth game. Uh <clears throat> They both obviously have playoff aspirations. Seattle's kind of hanging on by a thread to that that seven seed, six seed, eight seed. They're kind of right at the tail end here. Obviously, Dallas is kind of bringing up the rear of the East Division behind Philly. But uh, I don't know. What did you think of that game? It was fun to watch. I like offense. It, I mean, for... I, I would have liked more as a you know owning a share or two of the Dallas Cowboys defense. I would have liked to have seen them you know be, keep Pete Carroll out of the end zone maybe three or four times. Three but, or four uh, times, three or four times that counted, or three or four times that didn't count. 
I said, just three. Take their current total and subtract three or four touchdowns. That, that's what I was Which, w- where was it? Was it halftime or was it the end of the game? I can't yeah. remember. Where Seattle basically Geno Smith threw three like three touchdowns right in a row, bang, 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 and then they were called back to penalties or you know whatever. No, they did it again. And then it was like you know what's coming, and he just picked a different guy, and then the same thing happened. Nope, that didn't count either. Okay, back it up, do it again. Nope, that one didn't count either. Back it up, do it again. <laughs> like, you know what's coming, Dallas. He's going to throw it. I've never seen... teams exposed this week. Yeah, I've never seen so many touchdowns and so many consecutive plays when the defense knew it was coming. Like, that was the thing that caught me off guard in that game. It was like, what? What's going on here? But it was a it was a uh, it was a fun game to watch on a Thursday night because that's not typically the case. But we will dive into some of the Sunday games here. Uh, Hill and the Miami Dolphins, Tariq Hill and the Miami Dolphins just blasted the Washington Commies. Um, it wasn't even close. Like right from the beginning, it was just it was all downhill. So you're uh, saying the uh, Dolphins covered the eight and a half? Uh, yeah, Terry probably won. probably a few minutes into the game, yeah. Uh, 45-15 Dolphins get the win there. I, I was expecting a win, but I didn't expect it to be a, uh, a, a manhandling at halftime. I mean, my God. <laughs> uh, Tua, 18 of 24, 280, two touchdowns. Uh, Mike White got in the action for, uh, let me hang up, one inter, uh, attempt for three yards. So there's that. Uh, Sam Howell, on the other hand, 12 of 23 for just 127. No touchdowns, one interception, sacked three times. The Miami D, D is starting to come. They're starting to become a thing again. They were kind of on track at the beginning of the season, kind of leveled off, and now they're starting to ramp back up to match that offense. So that's... That's, that's starting to look like a complete team. That's what's the nice part about playing with a 30-point lead. You can uh, play a little faster and freer. Yeah. With that being said, you know, looking at some of the stats, A-Chain, uh, back, was this his first game back? It was, wasn't it? Or did he play A-chain last week? Is, yeah. He went 17 of 73, two touchdowns. Mostert, he got in on the action as well, 11 for 43 and a touchdown. And then I, this guy that they keep saying he's supposed to be pretty good, I don't know. I've, I've vaguely heard of him this to Tariq, Tyreek, to Tyreek Hill, Kyle. something like that. Yeah, he went five yeah. of 157, two touchdowns. I feel like he's okay. Um, I mean, he did have two rushes for negative four yards, so that's not the best. But not I mean, he, for Juco transfer. Yeah, he did okay. <laughs> like, I don't know that I've ever seen anybody get almost 200 yards receiving. That's pretty impressive. But then again, when you have a 30 point win, I expect you to. You know, put up some some yards there. You should talk about his negative four rushing yards. Well, that's what I said. He, I mean, he didn't have the yeah. stellar day. He did have the negative four, so that yeah. kind of brings down that brings down the highlight film. Oh, well, let's yeah, well, let's let's put the uh, bust in the Hall of Fame on hold for just a minute. Yeah, just just for a week. Oh, but uh, moving on here to the next game. Did you see, I didn't watch it, but did you see any highlights of the Indianapolis uh, yes. Titans game? Yes. That was, I, that was uh, yeah, <laughs> that was a lot of back and forth as well. I feel like that was the theme of the week. Back and game, forth, man. back and forth, yeah. back and forth. Like uh, oh, King Henry take a shot. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> Minshew and uh, the Colts do get the win over time, 31-28. Uh, like I said, uh, the Colts they they uh, they're still hanging in there, even though you know their rookie quarterback went down towards the beginning of the season uh, to the IR. They're still seven and five, second behind the uh, Jags. But with uh, Trevor Lawrence going down, I don't know that could shake up things a little bit. Steichen will get Coach of the Year, man. I mean, you had that's amazing. Yeah, what he's I mean, done you, with that team. you got your star running back basically saying that he doesn't want to be there a couple months after he signed a deal to be there. So that's interesting. You get your rookie quarterback. He's on IR about, what, week four, week three, something like that. And then you got the journeyman, Minshew Mania, coming in, keeping you alive. It's pretty impressive. 
It, it's bonkers. Good, good for them. And you get rid of one of your marquee defensive guys. It was Shaq Leonard. <clears throat> yeah, I don't understand what he uh, he probably finger blasted the old DCs or the new DCs. Uh, I just don't think. Something. I just don't think they know how to use them now. Like he doesn't fit into that scheme. Which, uh, if you got a talent like that, you find a way to get him involved. But Minshew went 26 of 42, 300 touchdowns. He did take three sacks. Zach Moss, not a terrible day, uh, 19 of 51. Uh, but the, the stars Trent were... Richardson would be proud. Yeah, he would. The, uh, the, uh, the stars of the, the day, though, were Pittman and Alec Pierce. 11 for 105 and a touchdown for Pittman. Three for 100 and a touchdown for Pierce. Um, Will Levitz with the Titans, not, not, not an ideal day for him. 16 for 33, 224 touchdown, and he took six sacks. He got his ass handed to him time after time after time again. <laughs> um, Henry did go 21 of 102. He had two touchdowns. Hopkins, five of 75 and a touchdown. Uh, Derek Henry did get a uh, concussion. Uh, supposedly he avoided concussion. I don't know what's going on with that. But uh, you said earlier you thought he wasn't going to play this week. His eggs are scrambled. I don't think he's playing. Who do they play this week? Do you know? Oh, my God. What day is it? You asked me this after all these alcohols? <laughs> Seriously, you couldn't, you couldn't have talked about this shit earlier? Uh, Dolphins. Da-da-da. Oof. Good luck. Oh, what? That's the Monday night doubleheader. Yeah. yeah, good luck with that one. 13 point spread. Woo! Yeah, they may need him. God damn, take the points. I don't yeah. Give a damn, if they just hung 30 on. Oh my God, Washington. It'll be uh, it'll be interesting though to see how this Indianapolis team fares out and how that division fares out because Jacksonville's looked pretty dominant, but now with Lawrence being hurt, I don't know. Things could flip. Things could get real interesting real quick in that division, and even the Texans. They, I mean, they're they're still hanging around. And they have a little bit more work to do, but they're still uh, they're still not out of it. Uh, we'll move to the next uh, blowout here. The 49ers. Uh, no, not quite. <laughs> I said blowout, not a dumpster. We have uh, the 49ers show up, and it is kind of interesting when you look at the uh, the box score for that one. San Francisco didn't really even do anything towards like the last. What, it was like five, six, seven minutes, something like that, of the first half. It was basically all Philadelphia. And then San Francisco just put the pedal down and was like, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys at the end of the game. And then Philadelphia basically was non-existent. Like, it was just embarrassment after embarrassment. Uh, 49ers do basically knock down the Eagles in a one-handed match. Uh, rematch. Handled. Yeah, what a rematch of the championship from last year, 42 to 19. Uh, Brock Purdy, 19 of 27, 314, four touchdowns, only took two sacks. Mc- Stellar day as usual, 17 for 93 and a touchdown. Uh, but the star of the day, Debo Samuel, three of 22 and a touchdown on the ground, four, 116, two touchdowns in the air. He had a hell of a day. He was everywhere, and has he been that dominant? I mean, I know he's a he's a fairly dominant player, but they have so many weapons. Has he been like the dominant guy? Like he showed up for this game all season. I feel like he's been kind of quiet. Like he's he's, he's having, known. He's been having a hell of a season. He didn't have yeah. such a good season in Week Six when the Browns beat him. <laughs> yeah, Browns well, took and, out their and, top two weapons, but no, and, he's been having, Debo's been having a good season. Well, and what was it? It was when the Browns beat them ar- around that same time. They had like a three game s- slide, didn't they? If I remember right, the Niners didn't they lose three in a row? God, I don't know if that actually happened. I think they won like. Wait, 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 hold on. Jesus Christ, you get way too many. You're going deep in the fucking bucket. No, you're getting nuts here, Jared. Yeah, Jared. yeah they lost they three won. in a row. They lost three in a row. Browns week six, Vikings week seven, Bengals week uh, eight. <sighs> Last three in a row. Broke them. The Browns broke them. Yeah, 1917 to the Browns. 22 17. 
They've only scored 17 points in three games in a row. 19-17 to the Browns, 22-17 to the Vikings, 31-17 to the Bengals. Yeah. Hmm. But uh, Jalen Hurts, yeah, 26-45, 298, one touchdown. He did. uh, Mariota showed up, two for three attempts. For 16 yards hurts seven for 20 on the ground as well and his typical touchdown uh aj brown stellar day as usual eight receptions for 114 are they do we okay do we think philly is still the undisputed number one team in the conference i mean i don't see how anybody could put them there when they were one sam Fran was two even though the record doesn't reflect they just beat them and they wasn't even close. Like, I don't see how anybody doesn't put San Fran number one. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, Jesus Christ. The Eagles, let's not forget, Zach Wilson beat the Eagles. It's true. Zach it's true. Wilson. P- press uh, pause and rewind. So what? Uh, those are the Wilson two. Those, and the those Jets are the beat the goddamn Eagles. So they got beat by the best and the worst. <laughs> Dude. Does that mean the, that? The Does games that... they won, they barely beat the Patriots. Yeah. I mean, come on, man. They barely beat they beat the Commanders by a field goal, the Commanders. Jared. They lost as to... let's go back to that one. They lost to Zach Wilson. And then the Commanders just got throttled by thirty. They got <laughs> to the smoked Dolphins. by the Dolphins. They got smoked <laughs> by the Dolphins. They barely beat the Commanders twice. For God's sake. Well, hang they on a minute. Got... Hang on a minute. Boys. Didn't uh didn't I could be wrong? They didn't here. lose in week ten. Week ten, they didn't lose week ten. Didn't the Eagles play? They played the Dolphins. Yeah, they. Yep, they beat them. Thirty-one seventeen. I was just gonna say because what what happens if Tua comes up against him? But he did already. That's what I don't understand. Because they beat the oh, they beat the Dolphins pretty good. Thirty-one seventeen. That was at home. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what to think about them. I mean, obviously they have a heck of a lot of talent, but I don't know if it's that offense that's tough or if it's the defense that keeps them in games. Like, I don't know. Jalen Hurts is good, and A.J. Brown's good, but who else is their weapons on offense? I mean, Swift is decent on the ground, but I don't know. I feel like their defense is the one that basically kind of keeps them in the game, and then they just, they, it's just matchups. Really? Like, I don't they're feel not, like they're when not when you, bad. No, but like, I mean, when you look at Niners, when, when you look at the depth chart compared to the Niners, like it's just stud after stud after stud. And I don't feel like Philly is like that. So I'm kind of shocked that they have the record they do. I don't know. That's just me. Like, they're not a bad team. But when you look at the roster, they're just not stacked. I don't feel like like San Fran is. Yeah, they might. Well, it'll be fun. They, those two teams might meet up again here down the road in a couple of weeks. Yeah. A few weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to move on to a uh, another one here, uh, and then we'll kind of touch on these last two, and then we'll fly through some of the finals. Uh, Green Bay gets a, another unexpected upset two weeks in a row now. Not that I'm putting too much stock in that and saying that, you know, they're the next coming of a Super Bowl contender. But they do get the upset over Kansas City. Kansas City didn't even look like a typical Kansas City team. Like Mahomes did not play like we're typically used to him seeing him play. Kelsey basically was a ghost. He was really non-existent. The the star I feel like of yeah, but I feel like even though that much of an impact in my opinion, I feel like the star of Kansas City that game was Pacheco. Like that I mean, nobody. I... Nobody had an answer for him. They couldn't stop him in the ground. They couldn't stop him in the air. Like, he would just put his head down. And I remember watching a play where he was stopped at the line of scrimmage, and he still got, like, a 15-yard gain, carrying half the defense. I love him. Like, the dude runs hard. He runs like Jerome Bettis, but he's the <laughs> He looks like, like him. It's just unreal how hard that guy runs. He plays like a little Tyreek at running back. Yeah, yeah. But the Packers do get the win, twenty-seven uh, to nineteen. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I will say, win, right. uh, 
and this has been an ongoing issue for majority of the season, but it just becomes more and more magnified when certain aspects of certain games with specific certain players uh, become highlighted. The officiating, the officiating is getting ridiculous. I don't know how many blown calls we keep seeing in these games, but it's it's making and breaking these games. The, the refs are dictating outcomes or getting damn close to dictating outcomes, and it's getting real frustrating. And it's not even just in this game. I know we had talked about it offline, um, specifically in this game, being an objective, you know, keeping my fandom aside. That was not a late hit on Mahomes. That was not unnecessary roughness. No. He's in. He's in bounds. He's pulled the bound. He's pulled the ball down. He's Your established bounds. exactly. He's established himself as a ball carrier. He's passed the line of scrimmage. Uh, Lafleur actually said in his press conference that Jordan Love did the same thing in an earlier game. And the defender pulled up to not hit him, and Love tight roped it down the sideline for another twenty yards. So if you don't hit him, he's going to run down the sideline untouched. If you hit him, it's a flag. What the hell are you supposed to do? Like if you're in bounds and you're a runner, you get hit. That's part of the game. That's called football. If you don't want to get hit, go grab a skirt and a pom pom. Like I don't know what to tell you. It's ridiculous. That was bullshit. And it's just because it's Mahomes, in my honest opinion. I don't think if you see Sam Howe out there, he's not getting that flag. If you see uh, I maybe even Tua, he's not getting that flag. Mahomes, he'll get that flag. Josh Allen, he'll probably get that flag. I mean, it's just ridiculous. It pissed me off. However, with that being said, I think it was the very next play where I think it was, I don't even know, I get him mixed up. Was it Valentine or Valentine, whatever, where basically he was – uh, getting a piggyback ride from MVS, uh, completely draped over him, and it was completely defensive pass interference, and there was no flag on that. Like, that was complete bullshit, too, and that was against Green Bay. I, I don't understand how you didn't call it. That was completely obvious. It couldn't have been more of an obvious call, and it wasn't. The other thing, and LaFleur even said that. He goes, I'm, you know, in his post game conference, he said, You can't really get pissed off at the calls not being called or the calls being called. But the thing that's more, the most frustrating is the inconsistency. If you're going to flag something, flag it every time. And I completely agree. That's the thing that's most frustrating is crews don't ref the same. One crew will call a call and the next crew won't the next day from game to game, week to week. The other thing that irritated me from that game specifically was when. I think it was MVS, caught a ball, and he's trying to dive out of bounds on that last drive because they're out of timeouts. Forward progress was stopped before he was out of bounds, and he got pulled. He was pu getting pulled back into the game you know, field of play. He never made it out of bounds, and they ruled that he was out of bounds, and they stopped the clock, basically helped him out. Like That forward progress was stopped. It should have been blown dead, yet we continued. That was dumb. Uh, with that being said, I don't remember what drive it was, but do you remember seeing the, the bullshit holding call? I believe it was probably in that last drive where Rashawn Gary threw his arms up like an NBA player trying to flop, basically looking like he was getting held, and they called it holding. Like, you weren't getting held, dude. You just got beat. Like, <laughs> come on. Quit flopping. You're a freaking NFL athlete. You're supposed to be this fine-tuned athlete. Quit relying on bullshit like that. Like, it makes the game look stupid. Um, but to get outside this game, we kind of talked about this offline. Uh, and I don't necessarily have skin in the game or interest in this game. But the uh, Saints-Lions game, you know, talking about BS calls with, uh, I don't remember who it was that hit him. But a defensive guy from Detroit, defensive lineman, basically came completely unabated and just blasted Derek Carr about a thousandth of a millisecond as the ball left his hand. And oh, wow. he got flagged for rough in the passer, and Carr ends up getting taken off the field with uh, – I, I heard – Today, I don't remember what all it was, but it was like an injured back, an injured rib, an injured leg, a concussion. Like, he was just a basket case from that hit. But it's like, that wasn't rough in the passer. The ball literally was leaving his hand as he got hit. 
in my opinion, that's not rough on the passer. Like, I just don't even know how you're supposed to hit anybody anymore. Apparently you're not supposed to. Yeah. I mean, don't even look at the quarterback with the intent of hitting him. Cause that's a flag. Like this crap's getting ridiculous. Uh, I, and it was a close game and that could have cost Detroit the game. It's just when you're letting the refs dictate, it's taking the integrity out of the game and it's, it's kind of, it's ridiculous. It's pissing me off. It's pissing a lot of people off and it's going to get to the point where it's already getting to, it got to the point last year where everybody was, Oh, it's scripted. It's scripted. It ain't going to get any better. <laughs> it's not going to get any better. That narrative's not going to go away. Um, was it, I believe it was, uh, yesterday, uh, but we'll, we'll transition since we're on the, uh, the shitty officiating. It was last night's game, wasn't it? Uh, it was Cincinnati and Jacksonville where it was a close first down or close to a first down. It was like a yard short or something and they lined up. And then before they started the clock, the ref moved the ball up another half a yard <laughs> and even, I don't know if it was Peyton or Eli. I was like, what the, what, what just happened? He just moved the ball closer. <laughs> like, I've how seen do you, it a couple times now, man. How do you set Real the ball suspicious. and then you just give it a good old little kick? <laughs> Whoops, not here. Put it in the right spot. There's a divot there. <laughs> like, what are you doing? I just, I don't get it. I just in don't golf, get it. Yeah, in golf, we call that the foot wedge. That's what I was just going to say. Reminds me of the yeah. golf. <laughs> Improve your lie a little bit there. You I just, little, you know, yeah. give it a little kick. And, and there's no way the league doesn't see this shit happening. When everybody else watching it sees it, guys like Manning see it, and they played in the game. Like, come on, <laughs> these guys are hired oh, to no. have these shows, and they're calling you out. Like it's it's disgusting. But. Cincinnati, uh, Jacksonville did play the Monday night game. It it actually was a lot closer than I was expecting. It was a pretty back and forth game as well. Uh, Cincinnati does get the win, thirty four thirty one, uh, in overtime. Uh, but Jacksonville does take a a big blow. Uh, McManus does miss a field goal earlier in the game, kind of cost him. Um, but the big thing was uh, uh. Trevor Lawrence, he kind of got backed up and rolled up on by one of his linemen, and then he just collapsed like a sack of potatoes and then got pushed back up over top of the ankle. Like It, it looked a lot worse than it did, but supposedly reports coming out that he uh, has a, just a high ankle sprain, so at least it's, you know, crisis averted. It's not, you know, career ending or anything like that because it looked pretty nasty. Uh, you look like you as soon as you said foot in strip club. Yeah. It just went limp. <laughs> For anybody needing a visual. <laughs> Best thing you could do. Saved himself. Look at him. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Kirk also left the game early on with a uh, groin injury. Um, I just pulled a Bijan Robinson. Why yeah. He pissed off some fantasy owners. Yeah, I'm sure he did. Um, but I don't know how their season's going to turn for the better for the worst how it's going to spiral i don't know if you got trevor lawrence and you know kirk out for even a handful of weeks i mean we're already going into week 14 and the colts are just a few what a game or game and a half two games behind i mean a lot could change pretty quick here did you I, i'm sure you probably saw it did you see the uh bs flop yet a, yet again another flop uh holding call uh, it was um, oh, who the heck was it on? I can't remember who it was on, but uh, Bethard, I think it was Bethard threw a deep pass down to like Cincinnati's, I don't even know, like three or four yard line, and somebody flopped from Cincinnati, and the call came back for holding, and then that's when McManus missed the field goal. I saw it may have been that one. All I know, I saw a couple flops that were embarrassing. It's looking like NBA. Like it, it, men should be ashamed of themselves. They're not even good. <laughs> like they're not even convincing. <laughs> it's just when yeah. The, when they actually draw the flag, that's when I get pissed. I'm like you, no. You did it on purpose. Like no, no, no. What's going on? And like all this flopping shit, and I don't even remember who it was. I don't remember. 
I, I know the team because I remember watching it, and I want to say it was Dallas, and I know it was the Giants. I want to say it was Dallas. It was deep in the season, and it was one of those drives where it was like a 10, 11-minute drive. Like it was just nonstop. Towards the end of the, the Giants were out of touch, uh, timeouts, and they were they were gassed. And I don't remember who it was, but somebody from the Giants dropped like just fell down right before they snapped the ball. They just went limp and fell down. And then somebody from the Giants went over and tapped him. That guy stood right back up, and then another guy fell down. It was almost as like, dude, it's not your turn yet. You just went down. It's my turn. Let me fall down. (laughs) They were out of timeouts, and they wanted to stop the drive. Like that's what all this flopping reminds me of. And I'm just like, it's disgusting. It's ridiculous. But... Um, we'll uh, take a look at some of the other scores here. We had uh, Denver and the Texans. It was a pretty close one. Uh, Texans showed up on defense, uh, aimed to hold off the Broncos. They get the win, twenty-two seventeen. Uh, like I said, the Texans are seven and five. Uh, the Colts are seven and five currently. Jacksonville's nine and three. So a lot could change in that division with uh, Trevor Lawrence going down. How the heck Brandon Staley still hasn't gotten fired is beyond me. <laughs> the Chargers and a barn burner take down the Patriots to a score of 6 nothing. No touchdowns in this game. Two field goals. Like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> I just, I don't get it. Um, Austin Eckler with a career day, 14 for 18 yards. What are we doing? <laughs> At that point, don't even suit up. You had Mac Jones not even starting again because he you know, he looks like straight trash. Zappy, 13 for 25, 141. No touchdowns, no interceptions, got sacked five times. Like, this could be the possibly the worst Patriots team I've <laughs> ever seen in my lifetime. And, and the fact that they went from Brady just, what, five, six years ago, eight, eight years ago, I don't even know how long it's been, to now – my God, time. yeah, give or take. <laughs> I, sure. Yeah, I, I, it blows me away how bad they are. Like, they are bad, very, very bad. But, man, how things have changed. Zeke was with Dallas, even with a remotely respectable Dallas team last year, and now he's <laughs> with the complete opposite. He's with the Patriots. Like, God, things couldn't get any worse for him. Uh, we already kind of touched base on this game, but uh, Lions get the win over the Saints in a close one, 33-28. They still maintain sole control by quite a bit of margin over the NFC North. Another surprising game, Cardinals take down the Steelers 24-10. to Definitely didn't see that one coming. Now, granted, I know the uh, Steelers are not, you know, ideal. The Cardinals, really? <laughs> All right. Um, Kenny Pickett, uh, did go down. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the, uh, injury was. I know it's an ankle. He, uh, was supposed to miss some time. He had surgery. Um, but yeah, he's, he's going to be down for some time and they're again, they're seven and five, I believe. So they're right on that, that, uh, that wild card window as well. So things could drastically change for them. Although honestly, they're seven and five. I don't know how the hell they're seven and five. I don't feel like they've played that great to be seven and five. I don't know what their schedule looks like if it's just who they're playing, but they don't look that good. They uh, are not that good, Jared. Yeah, that, that's that's why I'm shocked that they're seven and five. They I would have thought terrible. they, I would have thought they would have been worse. But uh, right up the same alley as the Chargers Patriots, we had the barn burner you wanted to discuss the Falcons Jets thirteen to eight. Falcons get the win. Straight fire. Yeah. My, it's disgusting. Disgusting. Ritter's, <laughs> Ritter's back out there. 12-27, 121, touchdown, three sacks. I mean, Robinson, 53 yards. Pitt, there's nothing to really go crazy at. Tim Boyle. A good game for he got, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That's the sad part. That's his probably career high. It is. He had uh, – Tim Boyle, he didn't have a great day by any means. He got benched. One me a bet. Only two bets. Who? Boyle? Tim Boyle, take the under. He got yanked. Oh, 
I was gonna say what the interception. <laughs> he had under incompletions and attempts. No, oh, he went fourteen to twenty five for one forty eight touch uh interception in the sack. They had uh Simeon come in for relief for him, five of thirteen, sixty six yards, things didn't get any better. He got sacked three times. Uh you got Dalvin Cook, he's out there putting up career yards. Uh let me check here. Yeah, thirty five yards. <laughs> Still a good game for that guy. Yeah, at this point in his career, you had uh, Gibson, 77 yards, Garrett Wilson, 50 yards. Uh, I think it's safe to say that the Aaron Rodgers experience didn't work necessarily, not because he got injured, but because all of the guys he brought over, not one of them have shown up on the, the stat sheet. Um, I know Lazard was a healthy scratch. I'm not for sure if Cobb was as well. He's not on the stat sheet, and I believe him, uh, Amos, and the Jets already parted ways. I could be wrong. I, it, it ain't working. <laughs> it ain't working. And now supposedly they want to go back to Zach Wilson, and the reports are saying Zach Wilson said that. Yeah, fuck off. Yeah, I don't want to play for you guys. Now, granted, Rodgers came on the McAfee show and completely, you know, disputed it. But then again, it's not like he would have said you know, he would have endorsed it because that would have made him look like an asshole. Whether we believe it or not, would you blame Zach Wilson if he said, uh, no, I ain't playing for you idiots? And as much as they've put him in there through the ringer and I don't know. <laughs> that team's a dumpster. I'm sorry. It's just not any good. Uh, we got the uh, Panthers losing yet again to Baker Mayfield and the Buccaneers 21-18. Uh, probably the highlight of that game is Mike Evans. He does uh, extend his NFL record with 10 consecutive 1,000-yard receiving, uh, receiving yard uh, seasons to begin a career, which kind of shocking. I didn't really think he was having that great of a career with Baker, but he's obviously doing pretty damn well. Listen, that guy survived through Johnny Manziel in college. Oh, my God. Baker so, Mayfield now. So he's immune to this at this point. <laughs> Shit, he's used to it. This is he thrives on it. He made one well, midget quarterback look good. He can make another midget quarterback look good. Well, speaking of midget quarterbacks that don't look good, you got Bryce Young, fifteen of thirty one, one hundred and seventy eight, one interception, four sacks. He's not having a he's not having a good season to say the least. However, Juba Hubbard, twenty five, one oh four and two touchdowns, so he had a pretty damn decent day. But flip the the field here, Baker. As uh, aforementioned, 14 to 29, 202 touchdown interception and a sack. White, he uh, he probably had his best day of the season or best uh, day of the year here. 20 for 84 and a touchdown. Um, and we mentioned Mike Evans balled out 7, 162 and a touchdown. Is that his best game? Rashad White, probably. No, Evan. Well, yes, obviously him, but Evans. Like I, I feel like he's had some pretty damn good games with Brady. Oh, you mean ever? Yeah. Oh God, I doubt it. Mike Evans was an absolute monster, but oh man, I I don't think so. I, I don't know, man. 167 yards, pretty damn impressive. I might be, I, mm. I'll put it this way: it's got to be in his top five. I mean, that's a hell of a game. I mean, yeah, he had 143 earlier in the year against Tennessee. Yeah. But uh, last game here, uh, the Browns and uh, the uh, the guy they wheeled out in the wheelchair, uh, Flacco. Yeah, it decided... was pretty fucking good, man. Dear yeah. God. That he, dude, uh... holy shit. <laughs> Looked like he just came off of the, an active roster last week. <laughs> I was not expecting, when I looked at the stats after that game, uh, yeah, I was pretty... Pretty, pretty shocked, to say the Dude, least. He, looked, the, he was the, impressive. The Rams did get the win, 36-19 to 19 over the Browns. But I'm going to be honest, Flacco, when's the last time he even started a game? Like three years months. ago? Really? 11 months he, yeah, he put with the Jets. Man, I don't even remember him starting with them. But regardless, the last time he's really been like legit relevant was probably when he was still with the Ravens. So... I did not see him coming into this game the first time playing with the Browns and throwing 44 attempts. Definitely 
Definitely did not see that coming. But uh, he went 23 of 44, 254, two touchdowns, interception, took two sacks. Uh, Kareem Hunt, 12 for 48. Elijah Moore, 4 for 83. Yeah, I mean, that was the thing I took away from that game. I did not expect Flacco to put up put up those numbers. That I didn't kinda... expect him to look better than Deshaun Watson did after he came uh, back after missing whatever time. Damn, I mean, I, Flacco I mean, looked I'd... good, dude. Well, speaking of that, I thought it was interesting. That was going all over the internet. You had Joe Burrow on the sideline helping out uh, Browning, like, you know, with the headset on, and then flip flip the script you got the browns and you got deshaun watson sitting up in the suite (laughs) kicking back and just hanging out almost makes him look like he wants nothing to do with that team but uh yeah that's a story for a different day but uh it was kind of the battle of what would have been like 2010 matt stafford and joe flacco it's like a blast from the past uh stafford 22 37 279 three touchdowns uh, Williams, 21 for 88 and a touchdown. Nakua, yet again, he shows up, has a pretty good day. Four for 105 and a touchdown. Um, what do we think of Cup? Do we think he's still not 100%? Oh, he ain't right. He busted. Because it seems like he, ever since he's came back, we've not heard his name. And typically in the past, if he's on the field, he's having blowout numbers. And it kind of seems like that's not the case. I mean, he had a couple. Know. He had a couple big games, but I don't know. It, it still a, doesn't. Still doesn't seem right. He's got a bum wheel. That's why I wasn't touching him in any league this year. No way. Yeah. Unless I could get him in the fourth round. Well, oh, even then, even then, it's it's still a stretch because of the the reliability. But we will uh, take a look at some of the breaking news here. We already kind of mentioned Kenny Pickett, uh, Tank Dell. Lands on the IR with a broken fibula. So, yeah, he's done for the year. It's a a pretty big blow to the Texans. He was having a pretty good season. Uh, Shaq Leonard, uh, we kind of mentioned earlier, released from the Colts. Signs a one-year deal with Philly. Uh, Ramondre Stevenson, uh, also high ankle sprain. He's missing a couple weeks. For him, it's probably a vacation, given the fact of how bad the Patriots look. (laughs) So I can't say that'll be too too bad for him. But we'll uh we'll flip over here and take Monday night football polls real quick here. Favorite all time Cincinnati player. We had Anthony Munoz, Boomer Asias, and Chad Johnson, Joe Burrow. Munoz fifty percent, Chad Johnson fifty percent. I went with Munoz. Kind of shocked uh Burrow didn't get any. Burrow got no love. And that's because Olivia Dunn doesn't follow us on Twitter or X it's, or whatever the hell it is now. That's true, but still, I would have expected some uh, some interest in the guy that took the Bengals to the Super Bowl for you know first time, but guess not. <clears throat> Anthony Munoz, my man, number seventy eight in your program, number one in your heart. <laughs> uh, favorite Jacksonville player. Um, this one was actually interesting because. They're such a young. F- remember all these guys, <laughs> been getting drafted. Uh, Tony Vaselli, Mark Brunell, Maurice Jones, Drew, and Fred Taylor. Uh, Brunell was the only one that didn't get a vote. We had Vaselli at twenty-five, Fred Taylor at twenty-five, MJD at fifty. I blame uh, Brunell throwing left-handed. Nobody likes <laughs> the lefty. <laughs> Is that it? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I uh I was torn. I almost went with MJD, but I went with Fred Taylor. Granted, oh. I know I know his career was basically for the majority of it with Buffalo, but he he had a hell of a career wherever he went. But MJD was probably the most notable I from kept, Jacksonville. I kept it home with the O line, baby. Tony Baselli. I I did like Baselli, but I think MJD is I, n- I never had MJD, but I think MJD was most notable for the, the one game where for all fantasy players, he ran all the way down to the goal line and then fell down to run the clock. <laughs> That's what most people probably remember him from. I like MJD. I remember when he when he was Maurice Drew. I remember when he was Maurice Jones. I remember, man, I, I remember him in college. He, I, I like Maurice Jones. He's Drew, had a Maurice he's had Drew. a. You name it, all of them. He's had a couple of different personas over the, over his time. He's a fancy player. He appreciates it all. 
he's good. Fragile Fred Taylor's all right. I'm a big Gator <laughs> fan, but uh-uh. he's all right. Yeah. I wouldn't vote for him, but I'm glad somebody did. You're welcome. I didn't think uh, anybody would, to be totally honest. But <laughs> you surprised me yet again. I'm glad I keep you guessing. Uh, our favorite all-time crossover player uh, played for Cincinnati and Jacksonville. Marvin Jones, Kevin Hardy, Reggie Nelson, Tyler Eifert. I actually forgot that Eifert played for Jacksonville. I don't know. I don't ever remember him really playing for them. I remember him playing for Not much. Cincy. And Marvin Jones, I feel like he's almost kind of like a Fitz Magic. I feel like he's been a little bit of everywhere. I remember him, obviously, heavy with Detroit, heavy with Cincinnati, a couple years or so in Jacksonville. I feel like he was elsewhere as well. I feel like he kind of played everywhere. Yeah, I didn't vote for him either. I, I was a Kevin Hardy fan. Yeah, I voted for Hardy as well. Just because I have a hard time narrowing it down to just the two teams for Marvin Jones. But uh, Jones and Hardy both got 50%. Nice. So, round out the top there. Uh, but we uh, we are we did wrap up week 13, so we're heading into week 14. We're, uh, we're on the back nine here. It seems like this NFL season's flew by really quick. Uh, a lot quicker than I realized i guess season's coming to a close pretty quick but we are starting into week 14 here and we got this uh barn burner i i can't wait i can already i can already call your your uh your guess here we got the thursday night game we got the patriots and the steelers you taking the over or the under you're taking the over right <laughs> it's the lowest last time i looked it was at like 30 it says right now 29 and a half on score oh mobile. Oh my God, dude. It's <laughs> literally, I think the lowest they said since like the Browns and whoever back when, probably when like, holy shit, Jake DeLome or whoever was quarterback. This is like, this is like a college game with Iowa. <laughs> 29 it's and a half. That is for, that's for an disgusting. N for an NFL game. You got the Steelers. With Mitch Trubisky, no Kenny Pickett, no, is it official yet? No Najee Harris? I don't know if it's ruled out or not. Okay, well, either way, a banged up Najee Harris. It's questionable, yeah. You got, this, you got the Patriots with, I assume, no Mac Jones, maybe Bailey Zappi, like, no Ramondre Stevenson. He's probably not, but more than likely he ain't playing. Yeah. I mean, Jesus, fantastic. Jesus. I can't wait. I'm sure I can't wait. I, I'm not even going to watch it for the game. I'm going to watch it just to hear the commentary and hear how much enthusiasm Al Michaels and uh, Herb Street have to fake. Because <laughs> it's unbelievable how much they have to fake the interest in that game. Like, it's going to be bad. It, oh, my God. It, it's going to be absolutely terrible. They should, they should have better luck showing after the game on Ezekiel Elliott talks to Cameron Hamburg and they talk about how things were so good in the nineties when they played against it. Holy shit, man. Yeah. Back in the day, the old days. back in the, back in Herbert back, Hoover was president. Yeah. Back in the day when times were fun and you, we were winning, uh, but, man, we're uh, we, shit, we're nervous. Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, we, we do have a barn burner, like I just said uh, on Thursday, but we also do have a double header on uh, Monday. We got the Packers Giants at eight fifteen on is it ABC? Yes, ABC. Then you got the Titans Dolphins on uh, ESPN, I believe. Yes. So uh, yeah, we got some interesting matchups here, but uh, yeah, I think that'll wrap up this week of the fifth quarter sports cast. You want to download, rate, subscribe, review, all that fun stuff. You want to interact with us on all the socials. Hit us up, 5th Q Sportscast, 5THQ Sportscast. Um, I would say go make some wagers, go make some bets. But unless you're betting on the under, don't touch tomorrow. Because <laughs> there's going to be no good bets on that game. You're most likely going to lose unless you're betting unders. Uh, but yeah, go have some fun. Don't watch that game. Watch some football. And uh, we'll catch you back here and catch up and break down some Week 14 action. And, uh, yeah, we'll see how everybody did on their bets here. I got nothing. Titties are dry. <laughs>